My name is Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video I am here with the news we all kind of knew was coming. We've had a bunch of leaks and retail listings and everything but messages in the sky about the 1070 Ti. That was actually an accidental rhyme but I'm, I'm going to stick with it damn it. However, the thing that has finally happened is an official announcement from Nvidia following the weeks of leaks and rumours surrounding the Ti. So, Alongside this official announcement and confirmation that yes, the 1070 Ti is a thing that exists. Not that you really have any doubt after the amount of information we've seen regarding the card. We also have information on the specs, price, performance and release date as well. So, the 1070 Ti has understandably been getting a lot of attention given that it's obviously neatly sandwiched between the 1070 and the 1080, and there's a lot of people saying, well, isn't this going to be basically nipping at the heels of the 1080? And the answer is basically, yeah, it kind of is. Now, the 1070 Ti does use a GP104 to power everything, but it's a slight variation, and the Ti uses a new SKU by the name of GP104-300, and it has just a single SM disabled, meaning it should be very close to the 1080 in terms of both specs and performance. And I know you're wondering, okay, that's all great, but what about the price? Now the suggested retail price is actually going to be $449 US, obviously, or £419 or 469 euros. So that is the suggested price from Nvidia, and from what I understand that is going to be the price of the Founders Edition as well. Obviously, all the partners, and we have a ton of announcements from them, all their lineups have basically been confirmed. You know, Zotac, EVGA, MSI, ASUS, all of that. Got a ton of information to get through. Um, so we got all that. But we, of course, have the concern of the whole mining craze, which has still seen GPU prices fluctuating. So we m might see that happen to the tie as well. So it's it basically remains to be seen whether or not retailers will stick to the suggested price from Nvidia. But let's let's move swiftly on, shall we, as we have a fair bit to get through, as I just said. The 1070 Ti has 2,432 CUDA cores, which is a significant improvement over the 1920 of the 1070, and also uses 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 running at 8 gigabytes per second, or GBPS, sorry, for a total bandwidth of 256 gigabytes a second. Now, the Founders Edition will definitely seem familiar to those of you who have seen or used a 1080, as it has the same dual FET power supply and also has the DisplayPort, HDMI, and DVI connections. The base clock has been bumped to 1607 megahertz versus the 1506 of the 1070 and the basted sorry the the the, the rated don't know where basted came from there excuse me the rated boost clock remains the same at 1683 so a very minor boost clock available however there were some reports as i'm sure you saw as we ourselves covered it on this very channel that NVIDIA had removed the ability to overclock the 1070 Ti to basically stop it from completely overtaking the 1080 and obviously for a much cheaper price as well, but that does not seem to be the case. The 1080 does have an advantage in CUDA cores and of course it has a faster GDDR5X memory, but I wouldn't really be all that surprised to see the 1070 Ti reaching comparable performance when overclocked. But to be honest, in, you know, NVIDIA are probably still going to get people buying the 1080 because, again, it does have some advantages. But what they really wanted to do with the tie, of course, is to take aim at Vega 56. Because, well, that particular card is a pretty damn nice competitor for the 1070 with better performance for roughly the same price. Now, whether or not the 1070 tie will be in the same sort of tier, in terms of performance, obviously, you know, it's going to be better. But... Again, the price concern due to the GPU mining thing, blah, blah, blah. Basically, we're going to have to wait and see. But in terms of specs and the suggested pricing, it definitely has the chops to take on Vega. However, one thing that I will give NVIDIA praise for, other than making a really nice card, is that if you go to their website to go take a look at the tyre, and it should be on screen right about now, 
is that you'll notice that they are limiting you to two per customer if you're wanting to pre-order this particular graphics card. And that is obviously to try and put a at least a barrier between people trying to ba basically buy a ton of these cards to use them for mining or what have you. So they are kind of thinking ahead and going, okay, we don't want this to happen too much, this card. Obviously people can just like buy two and then buy two or use their friend's address and buy two. But again, the more barriers, the more, the more effort you make them put in, obviously you are going to deter some people. And it's just nice to see them making the effort to keep this whole mining issue and the availability issue in mind. Now earlier on I talked about performance, now obviously the card is not out yet, in fact it comes out on November the 2nd, but Nvidia did officially say that the card actually offers up to two times performance over the GTX 970, and again is a fairly nice performance bump over the vanilla 1070. So if you're perhaps thinking of an upgrade and you had a budget of, you know, roughly you know, $500 or £400 or £450 or what have you, the 1070 Ti is looking rather tasty. Now, obviously, we don't have any more specific performance numbers at the moment, but reviews will go live on the 2nd of November. Fingers crossed we can get our hands on one, but obviously no promises. It entirely depends on exactly how many review samples are available and if anyone is willing to give us one, that sort of thing. But regardless of that, we finally have a confirmation of the 1070 Ti. So, as I said earlier, we also have confirmation from all of the IOBs of the various um, different 1070 Ti's that they're going to be releasing. I'm not going to go through them all because, well, the list is, well, rather long to say the least, and that would be like the world's driest video just to listen to me listing off um, brand names for the different versions of uh, 1070 Ti, but I will say how much, sorry, how many each company actually has. We've got three from ASUS, we've got five from EVGA, we have two from Gigabyte, we've got four from Inno3D, one from KFA2, five from MSI, two from Palette, two from PMY, three from Zotac. So you are flush for choice if you are wanting to go for the Founders Edition of the 1070 Ti, but of course it is going to be remains to be seen regarding the price of each of these and of course any factory overclocks or anything like that, any snazzy features that they want to add in terms of the extra for performance because obviously you can get stuff like the amp extremes from Zotac and blah 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 if you want to get yourself a pre-overclocked one or if you just want to get yourself a normal vanilla. I will say as someone who's been waiting to upgrade their graphics card for a while the 1070 Ti is uh, definitely tempting to say the least and at a much more achievable price point than that of the 1080. The 1080 is fairly expensive even for a graphics card, so yeah, I think uh, Nvidia may have answered Vega, we'll have to see, obviously that being 56. Obviously which one does better, we're going to have to wait and see, in terms of reviews and real life performance and game performance and blah blah blah, that's going to be the real test, obviously, because you know it's all good to say yeah, it's got, the, it's got so many flops or whatever, but obviously what actually matters is, okay, but how does it perform? Fortunately, we're going to have to wait and see. But that is me done for this particular video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.